Well, looky what we have here. Ooh, look at this Le Mans. Buenos Aires, steel. It has the Reynolds 853 chromoly tubing. It's a classic steel frame with Ultegra componentry, which is the second level down. Got this guy used from the original owner, but there's some kind of weird little things going on here. We're gonna have to take a further look on this. And just for your sake, hey, what would this cost you to fix up if you bought it yourself? We'll go over those details after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary out of used bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy. On this old bike series, we are going to do... What is it going to cost you to fix this up? So, after all these years of working in bike shops, the last 30 plus, uh, I've been service manager, service rider, bike shop owner with my parents, all these things. So I just want to give you a little bit of insight on how much this would cost you if you bought this and walked it right into a bike shop to see a, a person like me that's going to go through the bike in detail and going to tell you how much it's going to cost to fix up shop rates. So without further ado, let's dive into this thing. Starting off, what kind of bike this is? Well, it's a Leban. What's a Leban? Le Mans is from Greg Le Mans, the first American to win the Tour de France in 85. He's been building bikes for a long time, for a little bit, before Trek acquired him back in the 90s. And during through the 90s and the mid 2000s, Trek built a ton of these classic steels, Le Mans geometry, with combination of different carbon ones, which I've had featured in other videos. But this one is a full steel, which there's a good, huge following of steel riders that people like riding steel. Reason being is they have a good forgiveness to it, um, has more of a supple ride, uh, those kinds of things. It is typically a little heavier, but some people kind of like that. It's kind of like a, a solid ride. I ride a steel pop rod, which is our Le Mans cyclocross version. Love the thing. And equated to steel, it's not that heavy really per se, because they've over the years have done a lot of different blends of the chromoly to lighten up the tubing. But first and foremost, when you go look for a used bike, you wanna double check the size that you take for that particular brand. So if you see a nice Specialized out there, or a nice Trek, make sure with the sizes listed or contact the seller, hey, what size is that? And go look at some size charts and see if it's gonna be appropriate for you. This, however good the deal is, it is not a good deal if it's not the right size. You're going to try to fit a bike that's not going to fit you correctly. It's not going to have a nice ride. And eventually it might turn you off to cycling altogether. So first and foremost, figure out your fit on that particular model and brand. And also going to this guy, this is a big boy. <laughs> it is tall. I believe it is a 59, but I'll have to double check that. And Le Mans have a different kind of geometry measurements. They measure from the center point here to center on a lot of them. So this would be spec'd out as a 59 and it's kind of square. So it's 59, 59 there. So they run a little bit tighter. Um, this one has a pretty high uh, top tube <clears throat> or a head tube. I'm sorry, it's a 17 millimeter there. So it's, you know, it's a great bike. They ride really well. Um, and one of those things that if you're looking for a nice steel bike on this size, 59, that's going to be, oh, probably 6'1 to 6'3-ish if I have, to, I have to reference the size charts on it. And I do myself always reference like the Oloman catalogs and measurements and so forth and kind of get more of a pri appropriate sizing when I actually list this bike for sale. So I can kind of give the heads up to the person that's looking at this bike what it actually will fit. So back to this bike. Ah, what a gem. So... A few things knowing right off the bat and luckily enough I was able to buy this off the original owner so I know what the actual kind of history is and he was pretty honest and upfront of what has happened to the bike he said there was a crash oh you know it sounded like he took blunt of most of the impact of it but I did ask him originally right off the bat that this fork is not OEM compared to this frame 
Um, that doesn't necessarily mean the fork was damaged before. It could be some people like to upgrade. And this is a pretty decent fork too. Uh, so it's a full carbon fork. Um, it has a nice little rake to it. It's, it's good quality. But in his case, he did have a crash and broke the wheel and the front fork and the rear front wheel does not, even though it looks like it, it doesn't technically match the rear. It's still a Bontrager, but two different models. So you had to have these two repaired. He said the cover on this guy was damaged during that accident, but everything else has been checked over by, my, uh, by a bike shop several times, and he's ridden it for several years after that particular incident. So in this case, he felt very confident that you know nothing's really wrong with the bike and appropriate parts have been replaced. That's okay, uh, but sometimes you get those individuals that are kind of shady or they don't even know themselves where the bike that they bought used and why it got all mismatched. But anywho, at the end of the day, I lucked out this is original owner. So he did put some TLC into it because he really liked this bike and he has several others and he realized this one's just one of the many that he doesn't ride currently today since he's gotten upgraded. So this gives it a great opportunity for somebody that's just getting into road riding. That's what he sold it to me for and he was very happy to sell it to me because I was able to provide that security or insurances that it's going to be gone through, number one. Number two, made sure it goes to somebody that actually fits appropriately and getting into road riding. So double, double one on that. So let's start diving, diving into this guy. So when I first check these bikes out, I like to take the wheels off. When you take the rear wheel off, just a tech note, you want to drop it down to a small cog that throws the derailleur out of the way. Therefore, it's a little bit easier to uh, drop that rear wheel out after you release the brake there. Whoop. Slides out. So checking the hub, that seems to be smooth, not loose. Cassette seems to be tight. So on these paired spoked wheels, a lot of the times on the drive side, they will have cracks around these uh, rim outlet, eyelets that go around the spoke nipple. Um, the reason be they cracked is either the, when they were built, they were over tensioned and caused those hairline cracks, or they were just getting to uh, shaving of material and uh, that caused it to be weak and started falling apart. So actually this wheel looks like it's in good shape, surprisingly or not. I do have a sack of these in the backyard that I'm gonna make some wheel art, art out of. But anywho, this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. So that's a good point. Also, what I'm getting at to the end here is the frame and fork. That is the most important thing you want to inspect. Reason being, if there's something damaged with the frame that you don't catch when you purchase it, you basically have a box of parts. So let's keep on going. Keep on, keep on. So this particular front wheel is Altegra. And, or no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the brake. <laughs> it's Altegra. Uh, the wheel's Bontrager. They're both Bontrager. This is a race, was it a race light? Oh, yeah, race light, and this is a select. So this one's technically two steps down, but as in front wheels go, as in tech, not a really big difference. I mean, maybe a little bit of a weight, but in this particular bike, the wigger's not going to be that too concerned. If I don't have a front wheel that matches the rear on this particular one, I think I'm going to be okay with the Bontrager. So at least brand matchy matchy. So not totally there. Like, oh, oh, whoops. What, what's going on here? This is this is broken. It's a little lever that opens and closes the brake. Hmm. I don't know. I might. Either I can fix this and replace it with the lever because it's kind of important to have, be able to quick release that brake to take the wheel off. Because if you don't have that, you don't really know where the brake adjustment is. So it's very advisable to have that either fixed or I might have to replace the front brake. So going right there, a front brake of this caliber, you can find used out there on eBay world, um, probably around about 50 bucks. So that's not too terrible. Um, it is a quick, it is a fix, so that is definitely a solution on that guy. Also, I need to check the chain. And you use a, cha a chain checker like this guy. And a 0.5 or higher is usually recommended that the chain to be replaced. And this guy is at 0.5, and you want to check it like in two or three spots to get a couple different readings. And yeah, this chain, I'm going to replace it. Um, right now, the chains are not really too terribly expensive. I'm going to say a top end, if you're on average, about 20 bucks. So we're lacking at 70 bucks there. 
No pedals, you're gonna to need to do that too. Platform ones are gonna be another 20 bucks, so we're looking at $90 right there. Bar tape, this did come with newer bar tape, um, so I'm just kinda, of, I'm gonna put different bar tape on it, but I'm gonna save this aside for maybe one of my personal bikes, but um, that's something you can still reuse. Actually, it does get damaged here. So yeah, bar tape, but still another 20 bucks, so let's say we're into 100. Cables and houses and something that I always want to replace on a used bike because you don't know how long they've been on there Unless they've been documented on a repair that they had recently that all the cables and houses have been re replaced Reason being is the cable itself will kind of cut through that housing or contaminants will get up into that housing and cause it to bind Therefore your shifting is not going to be as smooth um, the cable and housing I do replace is um, is actually uh, has lithium grease built in there so it adds two things makes the cable a lot smoother but also gives it a protected barrier from uh, water and contaminants so it actually is a lot better shifting and responsiveness to it so let's pop this chain off see what we got so with the cables and housing you're probably the kits are about 20 bucks for the shifters and 20 bucks for the brakes. So let's say that's going to be around 40 bucks. Um, that being said, we're probably looking about 150 in parts. The new chain, I'll keep that aside. There's reference. And since I am going to be replacing the cables housing, I'm just going to pop these off. The rear brake looks fine. So um, that's not going to be a problem for me. Pull this out. Um, shifters of this age are vintage. Typically it has a, kind of a grease that they, well, they manufacture it when these are new. They put in a grease that looks very neon green. It eventually hardens. And when that hardens up, it makes those paws sticky and uh, makes the shifter act like it's dead. Sometimes, most of the time with me, with the ultrasonic cleaner, I can clean the inside of this with ultrasonic cleaner heat. will actually break down that um, sticky grease and all of a sudden you can get the shifter to come back to life. And I use a uh, TriFlow Superior Lube Foam. What this does is kind of foams up on the inside and just adds that code coating of all those gears and cogs i'm going to clean these of course afterwards i'm just going to double check it but so it's hitting all the gears and you want to double check this too when you go and test ride it and again if you're not a mechanic or want to work on the bike if you go to a bike that you're looking to purchase and it is not ready to be test ridden walk away uh, or make sure you contact the owner beforehand or the seller to make sure it's ready to be test ridden because you want to know how it feels and go through all the gears make sure it breaks i mean all the basics right so um, also on these sh shifters as a note is sometimes it will sh uh, release uh, when the full lever's in so you want these to engage and release independently because sometimes those mechanisms break down inside and then you have a bomb shifter like I said, about 80-90% of these shifters, um, if they have some kind of a shifting delay or stickiness to them, it's most likely that grease that needs to be uh, flushed out, heated, melted out, whatever you want to call it, to get them to shift correctly. So I think the shifters are fine, but it has a missing cap. Um, I do have caps that I've had made to replace these, so they look, you know, similar. The funny thing is on eBay, if you want the exact same one, you can find these once in a while, but people know they're scarce, and they're going to charge you 60, 80, 100 bucks just for one of these little guys. They have no function. They're just a cover. So I've had some th covers 3D printed. They actually work well. They're actually a little more stronger. A little beefed up. And they're at least they'll, you know, be matchy-matchy and it makes the shifters look better. So uh, keep that in mind. If you want to buy those separately, um, they're going to cost you around about 20 bucks to 30. Now let's just say 20. So what are we on now? We're close to like 200 bucks now, aren't we? Um, well, let's backtrack. 50, 70... 80, 90, 110 for the cables, 115, 135, um, 
and yeah, it's sort of like about 160, 170, somewhere around there. Uh, the tires were new, so that, that's good. So that's not a, that's usually a pretty hefty expense. So we're doing pretty good there. All right, go back to taking these off. And so this has Ultegra on it which is the second level down from the top of the line, which is Dury's. So Ultegra, uh, this particular model of Ultegra was built for, oh my goodness, it was like four or five years straight. And they're workhorses. Uh, this is as a triple up front and a longer cage rear derailleur. So this will climb like a billy goat. I mean, you got the gear range, the, the do all sorts of climbing. And also on these, they have a lot of times the rear uh, bottom jockey pulley will crack. This one's actually in good shape. Also, if you look at these, they have more of a flat top to them. That's what you're looking for for the jockey pulleys as well as the chain rings. Um, if they start poking up like shark fins, then that means the chain rings are gonna need to be replaced. In this case, we're in luck. It doesn't look like they're shark finned. So um, apparently this person, when he rode this bike, he rode it a lot because he was a racer, um, but he shifted a lot too so he didn't sit in one gear and just grind um, where in case if you do you end up wearing those particular chain rings out those these look evenly worn or not lack of worn uh, maybe the middle chain ring is a little bit more worn but we'll see with the new chain on there it should be should be okay but we'll double check that for sure going forward oh i gotta get the other crank arm off there's a pair and when I'm doing this, uh, popping these loose, I'm going to check the bottom bracket. The bottom brackets, I mean, are actually not too expensive. And this actually feels smooth. Kind of has like a, a little bit of a seal and grease resistance, which is what you want. You don't want to be like free falling smooth. Because if it's too smooth, that means the grease is kind of washed out or flushed out or whatever. Something may, something happened. Something happened somewhere on that. Get the cable off. So this guy, somebody, when they put this guy, they put uh, blue end cap tips on there. That's a level of detail where I have color caps too, which means that person may have taken the extra effort of getting these, either the owner did, most likely the person who's been working on his bike. So that kind of gives you a good warm fuzzies that it's actually been maintained by um, a, a mechanic uh, that has attention to detail. Not very many of us out there, but that's kind of one of those hints of notes. Um, also, another thing to note is the valve core. Um, this guy may have changed his own tires but you want to see the logoing of some sort close to the valve core. That's another kind of technical tip, also a rider tip, because you want that logoing to be close to the valve. Let's say you get a flat. You get a flat out there and you kind of find where it is on the tube, then you can triangulate on the tube where it was correlation to the actual tire and then double and tri triple inspect that area of the tire where you got that actual puncture. That way you can actually make sure that piece of glass or sticker or thorn is out of there or hopefully the tire is not gouged or a big gash. And then you'll have to use a boot to keep riding. But that's why you have that little accent. So I will take pop these tires off, realign them with the logos with the valve cores and boom, then you got that little professional touches. Same things with bar tape. This is goobered up. The, he must have done it to himself, not the mechanic that uh, did put the blue tabs on because we don't go rapidy, 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 rap um, all over the place. We usually keep a very clean, precise line on it. And actually the tape would have probably stopped about here. Um, he just kept on going until he used the full wrap. Some people just don't understand you, you can cut it. So that's another tidbit of technical uh, details that we look at for or look for as mechanics. Ha! And yes, I've had too much coffee today. Um, going on, I uh, forgot to cut this one. Unfortunately, the little blue things are crimpers, so you can't reuse them, which is fine because I have a jar full of blue ones right here. 
and I have also red. And for fun, I have gold and also have black and silver. Um, I figured <laughs> once I run out of the colors, I'll just go to silver and then go back to ordering some. Uh, but for right now, I have a plentiful amount to work with. So what do I got here? There's a fork that is not OEM. Um, so it has this kind of different, but we'll be looking into this, see what the options are. As it looks to me, you know, maybe I could just find a replacement off a busted one I have um, and have a lever that I can actually replace that with the Allen to kind of salvage this. But I'm going to go with the $50 cost. And that's what's going to cost you. Here we go. We're going to check the bottle cage mounts. Usually these are okay, but when you have a bottle cage mount that's boogered up, like cross threaded or seized in there, which does happen on occasion, because sometimes the rivets that they put in there are alloy and or the bolt is an alloy it's a steel combo and they cross over <clears throat> then you have some serious issues so you want to double check these especially if you're going to be switching out bottle cages or if they don't have bottle cages you want to check them if they don't have any bolts in them you want to double check them reason being you want to be able to thread and thread in and out with ease um, and be able to utilize those mounts because believe me like in colorado here you definitely want to drink a lot of water so those you want if they're boogered up don't panic you can take it to a bike shop if they know what they're doing they can cut it off drill it out clean out the sh shavings from the inside and re-ribbit a new one in there for you um, and then you know it may not match exactly but once you put a bottle cage on there you're not going to see it anyway it's totally covered up so here we go, front derailleur. All right, we're getting close to inspecting the frame portion of our segment, and that will determine if this was a bust, flip, or a flop. No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Wrong show. Um, diamond in the rough, maybe? <sighs> Let's see. Oh, I'm going to take, I like taking these uh, cable guides off and clean them and the sonic cleaner too reason being is a uh, you want these to be functioning really well for the rider so while they're riding they can do adjustments um, of the cable if they need be like if a cable gets loose or what have you and you need to do micro adjustments they have that ability to do that um, so it's kind of one of those professional touches i want to make sure those our lube, they shift smoothly. And first I want to get all the contaminants out of them. So I do sonic clean those. So I have a little bit better area, better item to clean or the lube. So I'm not pushing dirt into areas where just making it worse or it seems fine for a while. Then it just gets worse after that. So, all right. So I go through tube to tube. So I'm doing a down, uh, seat stay this is the seat and this is the stay that goes down to the dropout those particular ones they do not have replaceable derailleur hangers but they can be moved back because they're steel um, that's why you can see you know, see they're very skinny in this area it's going to check the chain stay but obviously you don't want to go too far because you go back and forth back and forth it may not line up correctly or they may snap um, I believe you can probably get them repaired, but I'm not sure what the cost would be on that per se. And I did notice right over here on the back side in the seat stays, both of the Le Mans, the stickers have been boogered up in the equal areas. What happened here was band clamps were put on to the frame for a, a rack, which are these guys here to make a false brake, uh, uh, brake bolt. So you can put a rear rack on there. That's what I'm assuming happened. These are okay, they don't damage the frame, but it did actually damage the stickering, but the actual paint underneath is fine. So it's not as pretty as I would like it to be, uh, but you know, the frame is still uh, very intact 
and not compromised, and even the paint is not compromised underneath, it's just a sticker. You probably find something online where they actually have sticker kits made for these. Get a kit and replace the stickers that you want. But knowing that the stickers on these are clear coated on there, so just don't go crazy willy nilly thinking you're gonna just do that. So that was one thing I noticed on the frame. So let's check underneath, make sure there's no, there's a couple little scarring areas, but nothing really too concerning. No dings per se, or big old scratches that I can find so far. Seal number is there, so that's a good sign. I'm gonna inspect this area up here really closely because he said he crashed and the fork was replaced. So I wanna double check and make sure that nothing was compromised in the head tube. Also the top tube and the down tube related to. Um, this does have a pretty good little chipping scarring right here, um, but it's just the paint. It actually didn't ding the tubing itself. I did have once a Ritchie tubing mountain bike and um, it was steel. And when I had a couple collisions on it, it dinged very easily. It was very thin um, in, in the tubing. But the, these particular little mods, which I like, uh, they are, you know, the 583 Reynolds tubing, but they seem to be thicker. I have not seen very many of these dented. So that's a good sign that's actually a pretty thick gauge of uh, tubing on there. And on this side is looking good. Also, the little frame sticker from the bike shop that was sold at originally. It's called uh, Wheat Ridge Cyclery. In Wheat Ridge, Colorado. They've been around since the 70s. It's family owned. My parents used to trade bikes with them back in the 90s, late 80s and 90s when we had our shop. And uh, they're a really nice outfit. They're still around today, doing good things. All right. Uh, what do we got here? Well, it looks like it's just a scratch. The head badge looks clean. Clean up the bottle mounts. Seat tube looks pretty good. Just little scratches on the seat stay and the non-drive side. Right. And also you want to inspect underneath, uh, make sure there's nothing hidden scary. Sometimes car racks will chew up the top tube and you get road sticky debris underneath the down tube. So in this case, I think we're really good. Actually, this frame is gonna be really good for somebody. But let's check this seat post. Why am I checking this, you say? Hmm. Well, some people that really get into racing like to cut their seat posts down for weight loss, which is ridiculous. <laughs> because when you go to sell the bike, you don't know where the height limit line is. And this one is right there. That's what you're looking for, those little hash marks. Um, and this one's actually tapered, and that's on design. And the funny thing is, is it's not very long seat post for this big of a bike. So it was already at almost at its max limit. So that might limit the, but it's a 27.2 seat post, very common size. If you get this bike and you're a taller rider, you can get a longer seat post for like 20 bucks. So not huge. And also, you know, that one has says Le Mans on it. You may want to stick with the traditional Le Mans alloy seat post, but if you want to get yourself a carbon one, there's some overseas knockoff carbons which are not too expensive um, or you can get really nice elite ones that are a couple hundred bucks so but you know that's uh, something you can upgrade later so the shifters are good stems in good shape headset seems to be very smooth bottom bracket smooth here so let's recap how much we got into this i would say you know maybe 200 bucks top out for parts well 200 bucks in parts well, you take it to the bike shop to have the cables and all that kind of, they're either between 150, depending where you're at, what market, they're between 150 to 250. So let's say 200 bucks. So to get this bike fixed up and ready to go for you, it's pretty solid $400. Well, let's say what, how much you paid for this bike. Well, I've seen a lot of these go on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist currently around 500 or so. I didn't pay that much, uh, but let's just say, for giggles, we're gonna do 400. So you're matching how much you're gonna put into it, how much you paid for it, 
which is really not too terrible considering you're going to have a nice solid road bike under a thousand dollars even around eight hundred dollars which is not too bad if you have a good solid road bike for eight hundred dollars it's a high-end steel frame decent wheels Altegra componentry which is the second remember second step level down from the top end that's really good because when you're looking at new, like a $1,500 bike new, it has the bottom of the line componentry, which is like four or five levels below this. And it, you know, yeah, it has the newer shifting and so forth, but this is still going to outperform and blow the doors off of that $1,500 bike for 800. So basically the half price of putting into it yourself, paying for a little extra and keep in mind, there's things you're going to have to replace, maybe like a saddle, pedals. Oh, yeah, those pedals. That definitely makes it 200. Um, and some bar tape is usually good, unless they had a brand new put on. Uh, but bar tape is kind of like wearing somebody else's socks. It's not good. It's just sweat point, whatever. Um, but anywho, you can do bar tape for like 20, a saddle, but anywhere between 30 to 150. So that's a wide range there. And the pedals, you're doing platform, you can find some for 20, you know, 20 to 30 bucks. If you do clipless, you know what you're looking at for that is, you know, between 40 to 60 bucks for clipless and you still have to buy shoes. But anywho, um, so yeah, 800 bucks for this bike. I want to say that's not bad at all, considering it's a nice high-end steel, classic steel, decent componentry, second level top down, wheels are still in good shape, and guess what, it has new rubber, that just saved you 80 bucks right there. Um, and the grip tape on here, and this is nicer grip tape, so this grip tape for lizard skin runs about 35, 40 bucks. So I'm going to try to salvage this and uh, see, you know, clean it up and rewrap, you know, make it you know, professional touches and all that. Well, anyhow, that's what it's going to cost you. Check out the final results of how this bad boy looks after it's done.